grace of our Lord and King, Jesus the Christ, be with you. Let us pray. O thou, my judge and king, my broken heart, my voiceless prayer, my poverty and blind despair, to thee, O Christ, I bring. O thou, my judge and king, my treason to thy love most sweet, my pride that pierced thy weary feet, to thee, O Christ, I bring. O thou, my judge and king, my tearful hope, my faith's distress, for thee to pardon and to bless, to thee, O Christ, I bring. O thou, my judge and king, with no excuse, for thou art just, my sins that set me in the dust, to thee, O Christ, I bring. O thou, my judge and king, my soul from depths of my disgrace, to seek for mercy at thy face, to thee, O Christ, I bring. Kyrie eleison. Lord, have mercy. Christe eleison. Christ, have mercy. Kyrie eleison. Lord, have mercy. Be assured that Christ Jesus, who was born and died and lives for you, grants to you who have confessed your fault his pardon and offers you the new renewing grace and strength of his Holy Spirit. King of glory, King of peace, I will love thee, and that love may never cease, I will move thee. Thou hast granted my request, thou hast heard me, thou didst note my working breast, thou hast spared me. Wherefore, with my utmost art I will sing thee, and the cream of all my heart I will bring thee. Though my sins against me cried, Thou didst clear me, and alone when they replied, Thou didst hear me. Seven whole days, not one in seven, I will praise thee. In my heart, though not in heaven, I can raise thee. Small it is in this poor sort to enroll thee, In eternities too short to extol thee. Hear the word of God. First from the letters in the revelation of St. John the Divine, reading in the first chapter from the fourth verse. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of kings on earth. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood, and made us a kingdom, priests to his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion for ever and ever. Amen. Behold, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him, 
everyone who pierced him. And all tribes of the earth will wail on account of him. Even so, Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Amen. Also from the 18th chapter of St. John's Gospel at the 33rd verse. Pilate entered the praetorium again and called Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Do you say this of your own accord, or do, uh, did others say it to you about me? Am I a Jew? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? My kingship is not of his world. If my kingship were of this world, my servants would fight that I might not be handed over to the Jews, but my kingship is not from this world. So, you are a king. You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I have come into the world, to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. Amen. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks and praise be to God. In the Gospel story, Pilate interrogates Jesus. The conversation develops in such a way that it is not so much directed at finding out what he has done as seeking a disclosure of who he is. We may find ourselves wondering about what sort of a man he is. And if he is a king, what sort of a supremacy is his? After all, are kings not meant to be victorious? There may be a lifetime's exploration in that, but there is many a worse place one might begin than with these poems by Edwin Muir. The combat. It was not meant for human eyes, that combat on the shabby patch of clods and trampled turf that lies somewhere beneath the sodden skies for eye of toad or adder to catch. And having seen it, I accused the crested animal in his pride, arrayed in all the royal hues which hide the claws he well can use to tear the heart out of the side. Body of leopard, eagle's head, and whetted beak, and lion's mane, and frost-grey hedge of feathers spread behind, he seemed of all things bred. I shall not see his like again. As for his enemy, there came in a soft, round beast as brown as clay, all rent and patched his wretched skin. A battered bag he might have been, some old used thing to throw away. Yet he waited face to face the furious beak and the swift attack, soon over and done. There was no place or time for chivalry or for grace. The fury had him on his back. And two small paws like hands flew out to right and left as the trees stood by. One would have thought beyond a doubt this was the very end of the bout. But that the creature would not die. 
And ere the death stroke he was gone, Writhed, whirled, huddled into his den, Safe somehow there, the fight was done, And he had lost, who had all but won. But oh, his deadly fury then! A while the place lay blank, forlorn, Drowsing as in relief from pain, the cricket chirped, the grating thorn stirred, and a little sound was born. The champions took their place again, and all began. The stealthy paw slashed out and in. Could nothing save these rags and tatters from the claw? Nothing. And yet, I never saw a beast so helpless and so brave. And now, while the trees stand watching still, the unequal battle rages there. The killing beast that cannot kill swells and swells in fury till you'd almost think it was despair. The Good Man in Hell If a good man were ever housed in hell by needful error of the qualities, perhaps to prove the rule or shame the devil, or speak the truth only a stranger sees, would he, surrendering to obvious hate, fill half eternity with cries and tears, or watch beside hell's little wicked gate in patience for the first ten thousand years, feeling the curse climb slowly to his throat that uttered dooms him to rescindless ill, forcing his praying tongue to run by rote, eternity entire before him still, would he at last, grown faithful in his station, kindle a little hope in hopeless hell, and so among the damned doubts of damnation, since here someone could live and could live well? One doubt of evil would bring down such a grace, open such a gate, all Eden would enter in, Hell be a place like any other place, and love and hate and life and death begin. Let us pray. King of all humanity, Master of life, Upholder of truth, Entering into thy glory by thy cross, to whom all authority is given both in heaven and on earth, we acknowledge thy sovereignty over every realm of life. Come, O Lord, enter into thy kingdom, subdue the world by the might of thy love. For as thine is the kingdom, so thine is the power and the glory for ever and ever. Word and giver of the word of life, inspirer of writers and dreamers, as a visionary of old, saw one like a son of man coming with the clouds of heaven to be given a kingdom of all nations and peoples and languages. Grant to us in our time, poets and visionaries, who see the world as one, an integrated creation, and who speak of human life as achieving its glory and glad mutual interdependence of human beings walking in the footsteps that take the way to Calvary and living in hope of glorious goodness beyond. For thy name's sake we ask. 
。アーメン。The hymn crowned him with many crowns. Of the kingdom of God. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.